Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. I'm going to be completely honest. This episode... I don't, I don't know about this episode. I really don't. I really don't know about this episode. Because part of me wants to sit there and make... Part of me wants to sit there and say, maybe it was me. Okay, Maybe it was me. I feel tired as hell. Like I haven't slept in days. But it can't just be me. It really can't just be... I don't, I don't think it's just me because if it was an actual good episode, regardless if I'm tired or not, I would still love it. I would love every single minute of it. And I get with soap operas, everyone, every every episode can't be a banger. But um, this episode offered very little nothing. Um, the little it did offer was good. Gwen actually being upset about Jake's death was nice. Okay? You got Gabby that's acting like a damn vulture. And I'm just like, the way that, I, I, mm. the way that she dismissed him and was like, oh, well, you know, we wasn't really the, I, here's the thing. I honestly feel like there must have been some sort of change because I felt like even when she was with Shen, she still wanted to be with Jake. Okay. This isn't the first time Jake was with somebody else and she wants to still be with him. Okay. I thought a lot of times when Gabby was with, with Shen, it wasn't so much that it was forced, but it was like she's doing it to get over Jake. You know? Every move that she made, every time that she talked about Shen, all this was was a way to try to get over Jake. And I never felt like she did. So even when she was saying things like, oh, well, you know, even though he wasn't the love of my life, I'm like, no, that's BS. That's, that's that's partly BS, okay? Because I here's the thing: I don't believe that there's a I don't believe that there's one person. There's only one person that could be the love of your life. I don't believe that. Um, but yeah, so it was nice, you know, seeing Gwen actually mourn and be upset that Jake was dead. Um, now after that, you know, her and and Leo. After they talk about Jake and everything like that, one of the things that Gwen asks is, where, where are you getting all this money from? Because, you know, Leo's like, oh, well, you know, let's let's go out drinking. You know what? Let's not do mimosas. Let's do champagne. You know, let's, let's toast one up for Jake. And she's like, um, with what money? You don't have a job. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So at some point, they run into chat. And I'm going to be completely honest. I, I don't even know what to make of this scene. I really don't. Because Chad, you know, this is a point where Leo was meant to talk about, oh, you might have something to do with Abby's death. And when Gwen saw Chad, she was nervous, like, oh, did he overhear what he just said? But he, all he did was came over there and he was like, oh, you slipped your way out of prison. And, you know, the usual bravado talk that doesn't really go anywhere. It's just there because... You know, just to remind people that there's tension between those two. And of course, Gwen with her phony ass, oh, how are the children doing? And like, you mean the children that you call brats? Right? That, that That's that's the children you're referring to, right? Oh, well, she was still my sister, this, that, and the third, blah, 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 blah. So Chad was just like, you know, listen, just stay away from me, stay away from my kids. No parts of you. So he, he leaves. Now, he talks to Thomas, and at this point, I'm like, obviously, those children need some sort of counseling. I feel like Chad needs counseling as well. He needs some sort of counseling because I don't want to sit there and say that. I mean, in reality, it really shouldn't be a rule book of how to deal with grief, but that's what you do have grief counselors there for. So when he's not there talking to Thomas, and he's like, oh, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to go out? Do you want to go somewhere? You know, Thomas is a child. He doesn't want to do anything. He just wants to be by himself, just, you know, blowing his iPad and everything like that. And you can tell that Chad is trying, and he's getting frustrated. He's getting frustrated. He's letting the things that Thomas says 
bother him and vex him. You know, and, and Thomas is not dealing with this, you know, with, you know, his mother's deaf father, but, you know, he lashes out and then Chad lashes out at him and he runs upstairs and this whole thing is just a mess. It's just a giant mess. And I guess on one hand, it is kind of good to see. It is kind of good to see. Um, because one of the things that I was crediting YNR for was when they talked to um, Harrison about about Ashlyn's, you know, death and everything like that. I applauded them. Because they, you know, on days they did that off screen. So it was kind of light. It was kind of nice to sit there and see you know, him struggling and, and, you know, dealing with his children and everything like that. It's just, it's not going well. And it's it's a hard and sad scene to watch, but it's real. And I, I can respect that. Orpheus pays Marlena a visit. Now, to calming her down, he explains that he needs her help. He wants her to, you know, be a counselor. Um... For Evans, you know, he realized like, you know, listen, he's out of jail, but he still got, um, he still got sociopathic tendencies. And if he's going to be sent there raising my grandchild, I need him to, you know, have his head right. But long story short, Marlena turns him down. Now, I feel like at some point she's going to probably agree to it. Apparently, they formed a bond, some sort of mother and son bond or whatever. Even though Orpheus kidnapped, um, you know, Marlena, you know, during that time, they, they formed some sort of bond. So he felt like, you know, if anyone is going to get through to him, it's going to be Marlena. But, you know, she turns him down and, you know, see Sarah. Sarah has issues with him. Because even though it was an accident, he was, re he was responsible for um, her child's death. But of course, he's like, you know, listen, don't throw stones. You know, it turns out that you're a murder, you're a murder suspect also, and your own cousin at that. He was like, you know, with people with glass houses, you might want to sit there and be careful. He leaves, and Sarah, and it's sad too because it's like I felt like this should have probably went so much more faster. But Sarah now wants to get hypnotized because she she doesn't like Smithy living with that doubt of. What could have and what could have not happened? She got a visit from Chad, and Chad was like, yo, do you remember what happened? She's like, no. Um, he didn't really unload on her because she doesn't know, and he doesn't know um, if she did it or not. So he just, you know, he's out. He leaves. Um, but she doesn't like living with that uncertainty, so, you know. You know, it's really crazy. I'm surprised she didn't think about that sooner. Like, seriously, I'm really surprised she didn't think about that sooner. Um, you know, even after they accused her, she still didn't sit there and go to Marlena right away. Like, yo, listen, I don't know if I did that or not. But whatever. I, I guess time with soap operas is um, it's there for a reason. It's to, to kind of kind of get past plot holes like that. Steve and John are sitting there at um, Brady's pub talking about how to deal with Orpheus. And Steve is like, yeah, no, we, we, we want to take him out. Especially after Orpheus threatened his children. So he was like, yo, listen, we got we to gotta take him out. And John is like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know about that, bro. Like, <clears throat> he's just, he's not feeling that idea at all. They go back and forth, back and forth. Orpheus comes into... The pop is like, hey, John, I just um, finished talking to your wife. So he says some things and he walks off. And Steve, at that point, Steve is like, uh, you, you, sure, you, you, you sure you want to go with my plan? It's just just ending them, just, just taking them right out, you know? And John doesn't say something right away. And, you know, even 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 I was just like, so, so you, you still think it's a good idea to... I mean, because John wants to find another way. And I understand that. I understand that. But it's different. It's different when it's your loved ones. You know, it's different when it's your loved ones. And yeah, Steve was like, oh, well, you know, we have people in common that you can go after. But he's not hearing. 
You know, he only started to listen after Orpheus was talking about Marlena. Then his tune, then his tune slightly changed at that point. So Evan and Sean are down at the hospital getting ready to take this whole paternity test. And of course, you know, Sean is like, listen, regardless if you're the, you know, father, if you're the bio dad or not, and I'm not comfortable with you raising this innocent child. You're crazy. Like, like straight up, you're, you're, you're nuts. I can't No, but you know, they decide. And of course, at this point, Sean's like, listen, I don't trust you. So I'm getting Ann Kayla to sit there and have them, you know, have her perform it. Now, of course, you know, Evans was fine with it because he already knew the answer. He already knew what the results were going to say. Um, I feel like if he didn't know, he probably would have protested and like, why the hell should we sit there and go with your, <clears throat> one of your family members to sit there and do the test? But he was like, fine, whatever. You know, I already know the outcome of it. Do the test. And of course, it comes back that I was going to sit there and make a, a, a Murray joke, but to be honest, I, I can't stand that show. So, But, you know, it comes out that, you know, Evans, you know, the DNA proof, I mean, the DNA test proves that Evans is the biological um, father of that child. So at that point, you know, it sucks. It sucks because, yeah, on one hand, yeah, you're not tied down to Jan Spears anymore. You can sit there and reclaim your wife. On the other hand, even though it was a short time, let's be honest, Sean fell in love with that child before he even came into this world. Yeah. And that is, um, that's devastating. That, there's no other way to sit down and put it. That is, that is, that is really hard. So even though he's happy, it's sort of like, like, happy as far as not being tied down to Jared, um, Jan is, is bittersweet. But it's still bitter a little bit. And also, even though that he is not the father of that child, well, again, Evans is crazy. So, you know, there's that. Now, at some point, Orpheus goes down there and talks to Evans, and he's like, hey, you know, listen, I try to get Marlene to, you know, give you therapy and treatment and stuff like that, but, you know, she refused my, she refused me pretty much. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. I mean, I never asked for help in the first place. I'm fine. And it's, of course, at this point, you know, Orpheus is like, oh, well, maybe that might have been a mistake to let you out. I was like, how is that a mistake? My whole thing was like, how is that a mistake? You knew who your child was when he was in jail. I don't want to hear about this mistake now afterwards. You already sprung him from jail. I, no one wants to hear that. Okay, no one, no, you can't sit there and undo that. So there's no point even talking about that. The best thing you can sit there and do is get him some therapy. If it's not going to be by Marlena, it's going to be by somebody. But I have a feeling it's going to be Marlena. I do. I have a feeling it's going to be by Marlena. Sarah had a quick talk with Xander. Now, Z I, I did forget about this. Xander was talking to Lucas about, yo, you sent that frame of my girl and, like, you responsible. What are you doing? And Lucas told him that, hey, listen, they found new evidence. Basically, the knife that he cut himself with wasn't the same knife that killed Abby. Um, the blood on it was only his. And uh, the knife, um, you know, it was it was different wounds than what that knife would produce. So, in some ways, it kind of clears him, but not really. Because, you know, Xander was like, okay, cool, you didn't use that knife. Didn't mean you didn't use another knife. So, I mean, it's, it's still right back to square one. But for the most part, he seems like he's more he's more satisfied with that answer. He runs into Gwen. And, you know, Gwen is just doing a whole phony thing and finding out about, oh, the knife this and the evidence that. And, of course, Leo snipped it drinking heavily because he snipped it thinking about, well, I don't even know what that was thinking about, to be honest. I can't even say that. He's worried. And, of course, the way that, you know, direction and the camera angles and, and just the way that they direct these episodes, they make it seem like, here's the thing, they make it seem like Leo is afraid of him being caught. So to make us think, okay, Leo's the one that's responsible. He's he's behind this whole thing. Because that's the only other reason why he would be so afraid and everything like that. Um, 
Huh. I, I'm still not convinced. I'm not convinced that it's, um, I'm not convinced that it's Leon. I'm not. And I feel like the tattoo guy who killed Jake, I feel like that's just super obvious. I don't know how long we're going to be spending going through this murder case, this whole murder trial, or murder mystery. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like that's pretty much about it for the most part. Um, like I said, it wasn't really a super great episode. It wasn't terrible, but it was like... I feel like more stuff is going to wind up happening tomorrow, and more stuff is going to wind up happening throughout the week. So, more or less, this kind of felt like filler. Like, this really felt like filler. Like, nothing really came of this episode. So... I don't feel like it was me. Really not. But let me know what you in the comment section below. What did you think of this episode? Um, thank you for watching. Be safe. And I will see everyone in the next video.